Shalom, shalom. How you doing? How you doing? It's Neely, and we are back for another episode of Torah and Psychology. So, the topic we're going to talk about today is also like totally simple and obvious, but totally profound and deep. Initially, I developed this lesson for 18-year-old women from America that were very much part of the uh, wave of what I'm about to describe, but then I realized just how applicable it is to us, to regular adults from all over the world that might be ensnared in the same trap. So what are we talking about today on Torah and Psychology? We are talking about bum, ba, da, bum, social media. <laughs> um, yeah, social media. You know, at one point I was listening to a lecture by Rabbi Dov Bear Cohen. And he asked the women that he was lecturing the following question. He said, all right, sisters, I want everyone to tell me what is more important, your soul or Facebook? Okay, so everyone got a nice laugh out of this. Like, <laughs> of course, my soul, right? He's like, okay, fine. So now let's look at this. How, many, how much time, how many hours do you spend working on your soul? And how much time do you spend on Facebook? And if Facebook's not your thing, just apply Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever your thing is, right? So then everybody realized, oh my God, wait, what do I spend more time on? How much time a day do I spend on my soul? And how much time a day do I spend on my social media? And I was like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, okay, I'm guilty, I get it, right? So this is definitely a subject that applies to many of us. I can even say, and, I'm, and we're actually not speaking about addiction today, we're rather going to speak about the motives, why we post, and how this connects to Torah, how this connects to Judaism. I'll just say for myself, as someone who's you know, obsessively dedicated to self-honesty and health, that I'll find myself on a social media, and I'm scrolling, 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 and then I'm like, oh my god, this is getting crazy, I need to get off, okay, I need to get off by 10, okay, I need to get off by this, and I'm like, okay, finally, maybe I'll listen to myself, and I'll put the phone down, and within seconds, somehow, the phone is in my hand, and I'm scrolling again, and I'm like, holy crunk, okay, all right, this is serious, right, so most of us are subject to the social media addiction. Again, this is not addiction. This is just what I call, let's say, the selfie crisis. So I'm going to bring out about eight different points, and I just want to share them as food for thought. And take with it, take whatever you want from it. Uh, I just think because it is such an important part of our lives, like we said with Rabbi Dov Bear Cohen's question of what's more important to you, your soul or your social media, the truth is, if we see what we're spending more time in, like even though I might dive in for an hour, I might pray for an hour every single day, the truth is I'm probably on social media more. So a lot of this series is about getting real, being honest with ourselves, and there's an outflow. All right, so I want to invite the following question. Ah, before I do that, I'd like to pray to God. Hi, Hashem. Um, Hashem, please be here with me, with us for this day, for this lesson. Please make it all about you and seeking truth. And Hashem, please help myself get me out of the way so I could just deliver important food for thought so people can grow closer to themselves and to you for a sweeter world. Amen. So first of all, um, do you guys remember the beginning of selfie history? I don't know if you're watching, if you're a teenager or if you're in your 70s, but anyone who is around my age, let's say I'm 37 at the moment of recording this, we remember the beginning of selfie history. And I don't know if you're like me, but when I first saw people taking selfies, right, in the very beginning, before it was a thing, right? When selfie sticks were coming out, when I first saw people taking selfies, okay, granted, this was full of judgmentalism, but I was like, oh my God, there must be something wrong with them. And the main question I had to ask is, aren't they embarrassed of themselves? Like, can they actually literally justify taking a picture of themselves and putting it and posting it to the public just because it's called a selfie. So now there's a name for it, which means we can do it. And I genuinely felt embarrassed for anyone that was posting selfies. Like genuinely, I was like, aren't they aware of, and again, pardon the rudeness, but aren't they aware of what, how stupid they look? Like, aren't they aware what a cry for help this is? Like, isn't that embarrassing for them? Now, slowly, slowly, as selfie culture began to develop, it became something normal totally normal, but I want you and I to recall 
Maybe it was about 10 years ago. Can you recall how embarrassing it was when you saw people posting too many selfies or even selfies in general? It was really, really weird if you go back. Now, this isn't shocking that selfie culture would develop because since you know, the last decade, we've noticed the eye culture come out, right? iPhone, iPod, iPad. But if, if you really jog your memory enough, it wasn't all about me. It, it wasn't all about me when we were younger, when we were growing up. It wasn't the whole world. It wasn't this look at me culture. And now it very much is. And many of us who initially believed that it was ridiculous and crazy and, oh my God, that person must be really struggling with self-image because she just posted five pictures of herself. Like now it's like acceptable. And I'd like to say that I believe um, as much as I am guilty of it, that I think it's justified bragging. And the problem with justified bragging is that we have this tradition in Judaism that the most important quality that we can develop is humility. Right? That's like the crux. Or in Hebrew, we say that's the sea, not as in like the ocean sea, but like the word sea means like the ultimate, the climax, the, the top, the maximum, the best. The best quality is humility. And yet, so many of us practice justified bragging on social media. Now, I'm not saying you go around taking selfies of yourself all day long. I don't. I have very creative ways that my Yetzirah justifies my bragging. I don't need to include myself in any of the pictures. I'm just going to show you the most beautiful nature scape that you could ever imagine. And I know sometimes I want to share, and sometimes it's about my ego. I want people to think of me that I'm so into nature. I am so cool because I have access to nature. Now, it's not like these are conscious thoughts, but if I'm being real with myself, I really say, like, that really, if we want to get to the punchline of this year, the question is, if self-honesty is the number one way to enlightenment, to self-growth, to Hashem, being honest with ourselves, being real with ourselves, being Yisrael, Yisrael, like we said, is Yashar, Kel, straight up, straight, straight with God. We really want to ask, am I posting the things that I'm posting for attention? Or am I posting the things that I'm posting because I just really want to share? And even in that, is there, how much ego is there in, in that wanting to share? And I think this question is really imperative because even if you really are wanting attention, we want to then see the social media posts, then they serve as a band-aid, right? Like, okay, get your attention fix. Or Neely, I won't speak to you, I'll speak to me. Neely, get your attention fix. But at the end of the day, it's a band-aid. And psychologically, what I really want to ask myself is, okay, so I want attention. Why? Am I struggling with self-worth? Struggling with self-value? Am I struggling with self-confidence? And if so, Maybe I want to start to think about that and why I want attention. And maybe then I can actually treat the cause. You see, if the social media post is a way to get attention, no problem. Let's not judge ourselves. We want attention. This is a lonely world. It's a bustling world. Everyone seems to look like they're doing better than us. And we want to be acknowledged also as cool, as special, as beautiful, whatever it is. Okay, fine. So we want that. Let's not judge that. But what we can do is now address it because if I see that I'm posting something, and again, I, I know we post things politically and I know we post things for a cause and I also post um, charities all the time because I really want fundraising. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Uh, I'm not saying that everything you post or I post is all about ego, but I'm saying let's take a minute and see if this practice of our culture, which has become one of the most dominant, predominant practices that we do religious, spiritual people included, let's just put a check and balance on it. Let's just be honest with ourselves. So let's get a little deeper into it. Part of the struggle with social media, in my opinion, and in a lot of the research that I've done and the articles that I've read, and of course, who knows what the sources of those articles are, but again, we're just doing food for thought, is that it creates a, I don't know if the word is a template, but it creates a foundation 
for self-obsession. Again, the eye culture, the iPhone, the look at me, right? We all are officially our own celebrities. We can all have our own channels on Insta or Snap or TikTok or whatever you use, right? We are officially our own self-promoters and our own agents. And a lot of times what we're posting is, well, I don't know, I ask you. So sometimes it's sharing and sometimes it's self-obsession. And the thing with self-obsession is it's actually leads to depression, anxiety, jealousy, comparison, and judgment. And here's why. If I have to be focused on myself all the time, well, I'm a human and I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have dark days. And if my self-obsession needs me to be portrayed as awesome all the time, well, then I'm going to have to lie to myself. I'm going to have to lie to the people because it's not all rainbows and butterflies. We all have hard days. We all have days where we don't feel attractive. We all have days where we're wondering uh, how everyone else seems to be on vacation when we're just stuck at home. And that can cause anxiety as well. And Rabbi Nachman teaches us all the time we have to be really careful about anything that leads us into depression and anxiety because what depression is saying, what anxiety is saying is something is wrong with this picture. I deserve better and God must be getting something wrong. Well, God isn't getting anything wrong. Um, and you're okay. But that's really not the reaction that we get when we look at other people's posts necessarily. So jealousy is obvious, comparison is obvious, and judgment, you might say, I'm not judging people, but let's be real. I want everyone to open up your social media. And I want you to notice that what's happening as we scroll, as we scroll, I'll actually do it in live time right now, I'm going onto Facebook, is if I'm being real with myself, I'm judging pretty much every post I see. I'm judging what the rabbi said in his post that I don't agree with. I'm judging this woman coming up that it looks like she's trying to show her cleavage. I'm judging this woman posting about Corona like she's naive. Um, I'm, judging, uh, I'm judging this person for wanting attention. I'm judging that person for posting that picture of themselves with all that makeup. I'm judging that person for looking funny because like, why are they trying to be a clown? They're actually dressed as a clown. I'm judging this Zumba instructor as pretend sneas because even though she's wearing really uh, covering clothes, they're extremely tight and she looks quite sexy. It's like, wow, judgment, 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 judgment. Now it's not like I look through my posts and I think that consciously, but when I really realize that I'm practicing judgment, again, we have a challenge because... And please, God, will do a whole thing on judgment and undoing judgment, a whole nother session on that. But we get better at what we practice. You practice meditation, you get better at it. You practice yoga, you get better at it. You practice um, piano, you get better at it. And as we practice judgment, we get better at it. And crazy enough, in Judaism, we're actually not meant to judge anyone. If we are judging someone, we're meant to judge le kafschut. And it's not just kafschut means benefit of the doubt. Uh, we're not even, if we are finding ourselves judging a person, an action of a person, we're meant to take a step back, look at the whole picture. We're meant to say only if I was in their shoes. And I wonder how many of us are practicing straight judgment or if we're practicing undoing our judgment. Now, if you're using social media to practice undoing judgment, judging favorably, giving benefit of the doubt. You make a whole game, just stay on that social media all day long. But most of us are quietly practicing judgment and we're going to get better at it. And that's crazy because as holy religious people, Jews or non-Jews, really all of us are hoping to work for getting less judgmental. And yet we're practicing judgment nearly every time we're scrolling. And again, this is with or without conscious knowledge. None of us are evil people that want to be judging others. But if we get real, what are we doing every time we check someone else's post? So just wanting to get more honest. All right. And there's more. So let's be real. How many times a day are we checking our likes? 
Okay, you post something, it's controversial, it's exciting, it's vulnerable, you showed a little bit more skin than you're used to, you said something you didn't expect to say, you posted a song that you wrote, you made a video, how often are we checking likes? Well, I'll be honest with you, I feel super vulnerable when I post a Shior and I check views and I check likes. I don't just check views after I give over the Shior, I probably check views later that night and I probably check views the next day also. Well, here's the problem and everybody knows that we've seen so many studies about this, is that when we get these likes, these views, these shares, these comments, depending on which social media platform you're using, we're actually subconsciously allowing the outside world to determine our self-worth. And as we know, like we said, the studies have shown, you get a like, the endorphin raises, or you get a comment, you get a view, you get an endorphin release. And what that's doing is that's training us to determine our self-worth and our self-value based on what other people think. So like, for example, what if I gave a fantastic sheer, but for whatever reason, a lot of people didn't see it, it didn't get on the internet, it was covered by other things. So naturally, what's going to happen is I'm going to start to feel really, really, really bad about myself. But why? Because my barometer of how I should feel, I've, I've taken the power away from myself and I've given it to the masses. I've disempowered myself and I've empowered everyone else. Who knows if I even value how these people live their lives or think, but immediately, the second I put my content or my picture out there, I'm also subconsciously putting a message out there saying, and I'm going to feel about myself how you feel about me. And the problem with that is the pretty girl analogy. What's the pretty girl analogy? Everybody knows that beautiful woman, or that beautiful girl, or if you're a guy, let's say maybe it's a bit different, maybe um, it's a guy that everybody knows they're like, a, like, it almost feels like objective, like they're so objectively beautiful, or that guy is so objectively cool. But here's the thing. Now we, everyone could think of that person in your head, except for that they don't think that about themselves, no matter how many times you tell them. Or a lot of women bring up the skinny example, or guys bring up the in shape example, right? So you might, they might think like, oh, I'm so ugly, or I'm so fat, or I'm not cool. And it's actually kind of annoying to everybody else, because it's like, can't you see yourself? And here's the thing, and here's kind of my psychological proof. You can have people tell that pretty girl all day long, she's beautiful, all day long. Is she going to believe it inside? And we all know the answer is no, of course not. Because as soon as we externalize our self-worth, as soon as we take our self-worth and we put it outside of our own personal wisdom and our soul knowledge, it, it never works. I can get 8,000 million comments and likes, but unless I develop self-worth from the inside, Unless I value myself because I really looked at myself and all of my darkness and all of my light and I see a holistic picture of who I am and I can value that, I am in a never-ending rabbit hole, Bermuda Triangle, vortex, suck-in of placing my self-worth and my self-value in other people's hands. And this is super disempowering. And the effects of low self-value and low self-worth affect everything. They affect chayai, banai, and mazonai. They affect our... They affect our, our health, um, our relationships, and our finances. So again, maybe we'll do another class on judgment, another class on self-worth and self-value, but this definitely contributes to those greater issues which contribute to how our life unfolds because our life unfolds as an outflow from our personal internal beliefs about ourselves. So if my self-worth is going down, 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 down as a result of social media culture because I've now given you the power to tell me how I should feel about myself, what's well, going to have an effect on the rest of my life? And that's, that's pretty real. It's pretty serious. Let's look at some more points. So there's this thing, I don't know if you've heard the cute, uh, the cute acronym that ego is etching God out. Okay, so if you haven't, there's your cute acronym for the day. If you have, you can understand the pie chart right? Um, everybody knows what a pie chart looks like, but I'll just show you. I actually made a cartoon drawing for when I teach this lesson in prison. So here's the cartoon drawing, the selfie crisis. But again, like we said, it's not about selfies. It's just a kick, kick or kickstart dive word to dive in. And that's a pie chart, simple pie chart. There you go. So everybody knows that in a pie chart, the more you have of one thing, the less you have of another. The more you have one thing, the less you have of another. There, it's an inverse relationship. So too with God right? The more I'm focused on me, the less I'm naturally focused on God. And the more that I'm focused on God, the more I'm naturally less focused on myself. And so what we're doing with this social media culture, unless we're really including God in all of our posts, 
is we're etching God out. And by putting the focus on us, by making us the channel and the local celebrity of our lives, we actually forgot that God is really meant to occupy way more of our mentality than ego and self. Um, and the other thing I'd like to say about this, because I call this the selfie crisis, is uh, does God take selfies? <laughs> if we're meant to emulate God, to imitate God, to walk like God, to be in the image of God, then how come when God makes a gorgeous sunset, he doesn't write like, dash, God did this. Or you see a beautiful person walking down the street. They're not wearing a shirt from God that says, I did this, this is me. But with a lot of our posts, we're not reflecting Hashem's humility. We're reflecting our desire for attention, accolade, affirmation, validation. It's a dangerous spiral. And the question I want to also say is, am I lying? Am I lying through my posts, through my hashtags? You have a really hard day, so you post a picture of something beautiful you saw. Hashtag best day ever. You had a fight with your partner, with your spouse, with your husband and your wife. It's so weird. Every time I see people posting pictures, not every time, obviously, but so often when couples post like date night pictures, they've called me like the hour before, the hour after to tell me what a balagan they're in and what difficulty they're having in their relationship. So if we also want to promote a world of truth, of emma, and we want to blast through this olam hasheker, through all of these lies, we really want to ask ourselves, am I promoting truth or lies through what I'm posting? Am I lying through my hashtags? I'm so excited about this. Are you? Like, are we using social media as a way to promote our deepest truths and vulnerabilities? It's a question. Um, because I believe that any type of faking, and again, I'm guilty of all of this. I'm not... I'm not standing up here today saying I have the answer and I am free of ego and all my social media is clean. I'm not saying that, but I am saying let's be real. And we all know that any form of faking destroys authenticity, destroys sisterhood, destroys brotherhood, right? Because if I'm all the time making my life seem perfect or excellent, like obviously like we all know this. This is nothing new what I'm saying. Nobody perks, most people don't post the dark stuff on, on social media. But am I creating a world where you now think that Neely is perfect and she went out into nature this week so she has an opportunity and, and, and look at her outfit or this is, look, am I faking through my hashtags? Am I faking a little bit? Am I creating, am I creating a lifestyle that I'm putting out there that's going to destroy authenticity and sisterhood because how can you connect to me if I seem so perfect, right? No one's perfect. No one is perfect. We've all got issues. So, I just ask us what kind of world are creating here. And again, this is all food for thought. I'm not asking anyone to change their habits or their ways, but like I said, it's about getting real with ourselves. And if we were getting real with ourselves, like surely we want to get real with others too. Um, I had a complicated last social media post because I was posting, I was trying to advertise for Meshi Ur. So obviously when you're advertising, you do want to call attention. You do want to get people's eye. So I happened to have gone on a beautiful hike and I posted pictures of the hike and I knew this was complicated because I knew I wanted people to see me in beautiful places. I knew I wanted to be associated with nature, but I also knew that I was trying to advertise. So it was a mix between ego and truth. And so I wrote in the post, I want everybody, and this is not a solution. It's just, it's just my presentation of telling you how I'm approaching this concept within the world of modernity, psychology, and Torah. So I wrote, these pictures are edited. <laughs> this was one day out of my trip. Most of the trip I sat and worked on my computer. I was just trying to present a little bit more accuracy with the post. So I wasn't going to mislead people that they shouldn't feel so bad about their lives sitting at home during lockdown while I'm out on a hike. Because like, again, do I want to make people feel bad? Well, I might be through my posts. So I think it's good to include sensitivity. <sighs> Um, again, we talked about humility and, uh, I'll bring up another topic, which is not my specialty at all, but I know I need to be aware of, and I know that it's another component in this whole, um, analysis, which is tzni'ut, right? We call it humility, but it's modesty. It's, am I being tzanua or am, again, it comes back to, am I doing justified bragging? So it's really what to think about because these concepts of humility and modesty are huge in our religion or any spiritual practice. And I, I don't know if I have the solution, 
but I do want to encourage us as something that we practice every single day to start looking at it with a little bit more honesty, integrity, social responsibility. What am I putting out there by putting all this there? So, um, there, there is another aspect that I wrote in here, but again, like I said, I developed this course for 18 year old women and I, and I included the part of, do you want your daughter posting the selfies that you're posting? So I think we could all ask ourselves that question, right? Do we want our children posting what we're posting? Would we be proud of them? Would we be embarrassed by them? I don't know, but this is a question for all of us. So let's just do a little review. And I really wonder, and I, I wish we had interaction, too bad it's through a screen. Doop, doop, it's like I could poke you. Hello over there. <laughs> I really wonder what, what thoughts this is provoking in you. What are your takeaways from this introductory lesson in just using our brains in something that we do every day? So we talked about the look at me culture, the iPad, the iPhone, the iPod, that everything revolves around me. And that we've sort of started or participating in this culture where we have justified bragging. Can you see that that might, there could be any truth in that in your life? We talked about humility and modesty and how those are, those are Jewish values and how sometimes they're in conflict with our social media culture. Uh, we spoke about in the beginning of selfie history, how at first we looked at it as a cry for help. And now it's like just normative. And we talked about cry for help. We talked about cry for attention. And it's like, okay, so you want attention, but now let's figure out why. What do you want to do with that? Uh, if you're posting because you want attention, maybe, maybe we can really go to self-empathy and say like, hold on a second. I want attention right now. I want to feel beautiful right now. I want to feel like I've done something with my life right now. And then it's like you're getting free therapy because you yourself are coming to understand what your true needs are. And then instead of judging them, we can address them. You have a need for attention? Let's see what that's about. You have a need to feel beautiful, to feel validated, to feel like you're doing something cool with your life? Okay, I hear you, sister. I hear you, brother. But then actually maybe the solution, instead of band-aiding it with a post, is let's get you a new job. Let's see if there's something, some hobby that you should be pursuing that's going to bring you increased happiness and fulfillment and purpose. Right now, a lot of people are struggling with purposelessness. Well, maybe instead of posting, or post also, but let's see what we can bring into your life. You want to feel more beautiful? So you keep posting, you know, the side angle, the no double chin angle. Like, well, maybe we get on the stairs instead. Okay, that's something I want to do. I want to get on the stairs, but I haven't. So whatever, just it's, it's taking our desires and our needs, and instead of bashing them, like, oh my God, I must want so much attention. I'm so ego-filled. Like, no, like, I want attention right now. I want to feel validated. I want to feel purposeful. So then actually addressing that with the way that we're living our lives instead of compensating with likes, right? So we talked about endorphins. We talked about self-worth, about empowerment and disempowerment. Where are we putting our power? Who, whose hands are we placing our self-worth and our value into? Because again, like we said, those things are going to affect the, the way that we perceive ourselves from the inside, the value we attribute to ourselves will directly affect how much money we can make, how our relationships are going, and uh, what do we say? I'm blanking now on the third. Um, finances, relationships, and health, and our health, mentally and physically. We talked about the etching God out ego, the pie chart of God versus me, and does God take selfies? Um, we talked about what messages we're giving off through our posts. Are we lying through our hashtags? Are we being honest? Are we faking? Because faking ruins sisterhood and authenticity and, and, and brotherhood. And those are the things through which we'd like to create the foundation for, for our children, for our future, right? Wouldn't it be so nice if we could just all be real with each other? That's why you have some of those moms that post like their laundry chair. And I'm like, I love you, <laughs> right? Or the dad that like posts himself like lying on the floor with the kids crawling over him being like, I got nothing done today. It's just like, why do we love those people? Because they're promoting realness and that's very validating. That's very true. That's the world we want to create where we don't have to meet someone on the street and say, hi, how are you? I'm great, fine, thanks. And be like, actually, I had a rough day. Oh, so refreshing. Um, let's see. Uh, we, we spoke about self-obsession, how it can lead to depression, anxiety, jealousy, and, jealousy and judgment, and how, we, how we're literally 
Same way we practice piano, we're practicing judgment and how Judaism actually advocates for the opposite of that, uh, for judging favorably, for not judging at all if we can. So just thoughts. And then finally, it's game time, right? Game time is the reflection of honesty. Is, am I posting for attention? Am I posting? And if so, what can I do about that to actually improve my life and help my life? Am I posting to share? And just why? Just why? Every time I'm posting, every time I'm interacting with social media, whether I'm posting, whether I'm trolling, whether I'm just looking at other people's stuff, we want to ask ourselves, can I include healthier psychological and healthier Jewish values into my interaction with the world of social media? Because it has become such a big part of our lives. And, you know, so too with anything that can go either way. For example, money can be used for awesomeness and charity and generosity, or it could be used for selfishness and hurting other people. Sex can be used for beauty and holiness, or it could be used for exploitation. So too, here we have this thing in front of us called social media, and it's such a big part of our lives. So we got to take this honest look, if you want to, and say, how can I use it for holiness, for self-help, for promoting wonderful things, for being real, or am I using it for things that are actually contributing to my jealousy, my experience of depression, anxiety, comparison, judgment? Um, so I leave you with that thought. I hope this was an interesting class for you today. I know it sounds obvious, but sometimes the most obvious things, the most simple things are the most profound and the things we need to look at the most. So blessing us with tremendous success, tremendous humility, tremendous modesty, while being able to share and connect. May we receive that magical equation of how to pull that all off from Hashem. Uh, and thank you so much for listening. Can't wait to talk to you in our next episode of Torrent Psychology. Peace in, homies.